Hello, Word Nerds. Happy Sunday, and welcome to our Sunday special live chat. This week we are talking about underrated book recommendations. So these are all books that we've loved that we don't feel like enough people are talking about. And as we're chatting, we'd love to hear recommendations from you guys, because the only way people are going to hear about underrated books is if you shed it from the rooftops when you love one of them. So that's kind of what we're going to do. But to start things off, just because it's nice to just talk about books every once in a while, we're going to go down the line and do a little, what are you reading right now, or what's the last thing you've finished reading, either or. Just for books. So, Erin, you are up first. Uh, well, I am actually reading the least underrated book series of all time, which is the Harry Potter series. I'm <laughs> rereading all of them over again so that I can read the new one when it comes out. Um, but I'm also reading a book in between each new book, because otherwise I'll just be like totally oversaturated with Harry Potter. So, I just finished Shooter uh, by Caroline Pignett. Pignett? Um, which is something actually I'll be talking about a little bit later on for underrated books. I mean, it's pretty new, so I'm not technically sure if we would call it like underrated yet. It, it probably will get pretty big, I would think. But, yeah, I've heard about so it. I really wanted to read it. So good to hear that you recommend it. It's really good. I do. Rachel? I am in the middle of reading... Uh, Finn Barris, Circus by Monica Sands, which is she, if you know her at all, she's a very famous Wattpad author, and I read this story when it was in its first draft stages, and I loved it so much, and then it was like, oh, it's coming out on ebook, and I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally I downloaded it the other day, so I'm in the middle of reading that right now, and it's like a circus, fairy, fantasy kind of book, and I'm loving it because it's nice to see the characters that I remember again, and... Yeah, oh, I'm excited. I just ordered that book. <laughs> That's oh, in the so mail. It's, paperback too? it's in the mail. Paperback, yeah. <gasps> it's out. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it. I thought it was then just I'm gonna make Monica. Nope. It just came out paperback. And I'm going to make Ooh, Monica sign it again. Like a, sign, a sign post-it note or something so I can stick it on the inside. It's <laughs> signed. <laughs> Megan Jashinsky, how about you? I am currently making my way through A Magic Dark Dark and Bright by Jenny Adams Paranovic. Paranovic. I got um, an arc of it a long time ago. A long, long time ago because I thought it sounded good and the cover is beautiful. Oh. And so now I'm finally reading it. I posted her on Deck Alley. I'm like, I know that book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... I just finished reading Exit Pursuit by a Bear, which I loved. I read it in, like, two days. For me, it, like, it was such a great book just for the story, but it also touched a very Ontario place in my heart. Like, I never get to read books that are, like, from where I'm from, so that was very cool. And I'm also a little bit, like, I've just started uh, Queen of the Tearling. So. Oh, I keep seeing that. I keep thinking about buying that one at my store. It's so good, guys. It's so good. I'm liking it so far. Yeah. And, like, definitely not an underrated book. One of those books I feel like I should have read ages ago because everyone kept saying it was great. Yeah. Yes. I just didn't get pulled in by the by the very first chapter. Like I'm such a fickle person, so I always flip to like the first page. Like the rule of three. Like I pulled that off the shelf, flipped to the first page, and I was like, the voice drew me in immediately, so I bought it. Whereas this one, the voice didn't draw me in right away. But I feel like it might grow on me, or like you need to get into it maybe. Because it's like more high fantasy, isn't it? it? Is it yeah, high? it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's world building heavy, so you have to like figure out what's it's going on first right. before you can really fall into the story. Right, right, right. <sighs> so yeah, I'm not sure how to like best go through just lists of mm -hmm. underrated books. Like, do we just want to take turns or go everyone give a fantasy recommendation? Or do you guys have any preference? I don't know how much you've prepped for this. I haven't prepped a lot. I have a few. I just wrote a list down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think just... Rachel. Well, I was gonna say Rachel and I are probably just gonna inevitably end up saying the same series, like the Angel Fall so, series yeah, by let's Susan. Let's do one first. <laughs> well, isn't that? It's also like, let's just talk about that one first. Yes, book club. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of perfect. Club. Ah, yeah. Yeah. The, the first one is. Yes. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, 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 the story behind that is that I read it a while ago, and then I bullied Erin into reading it because it was so <laughs> good. And then she was like, "Oh my gosh, this is the best story ever!" I'm like, I know, right? So, so then good. Finally, got to got the word for it as a book club, but and that was even before I was a part of the word news, So it was really exciting. We're like, "Oh my gosh, they're gonna read it." It was. Sort of a weird transference there. And it's so funny because, you know, when you start reading a series and 
you it completely hooks you in and you're so mad that you didn't buy sec the second and third book like immediately. So I, I finished the first book and like immediately called Rachel and was like, we need to meet for coffee now. Because she knew <laughs> she had book two and three. So I demanded that we meet for coffee ASAP so I could get the second and third book. And I literally read them back to back probably in two days. Yes. Wow. Oh my so god. If someone want to give like a rundown of what it's about, I've like I have it, but I haven't even picked it up yet. Okay. Um I I'll do the honors. So <laughs> I just love it so much. So it's a, yes, it's called Angel Fall by Susan E, with two E's, and it's a kind of dystopian book about how angels came to Earth and pretty much just, like, messed everything up. So it's very creepy, it's very dark, it's, like, the most horror book that I've ever read that isn't horror, um, but I guess what happens is that the main character, uh, her little sister gets taken by angels, and so she teams up with this angel who has lost his wings to go and get her back, and he wants revenge on those that did him wrong, and she wants her sister. Um, but the characters are just so interesting, and, like, for example, her little sister is in a wheelchair, and her mother is in the certifiably insane, and it's just oh, she's oh the most amazing character ever. She's so her creepy. mom so, is amazing. Uh, so so it's creepy, like, creepier creepy than like the thing. angels and the demons. It's like Paige's mom. Yeah, like, her mom <laughs> is creepier than all of the supernatural stuff put together. Yes. Yeah. So and good. then like as, as you go further into it, it's um, you start knowing the politics of the angels and like why they're there and what they're doing there, and then demons come into play, and, like the end of the world, and like, oh god, it's so fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's very, kind of like very creepy. Because it's like, oh, it's the apocalypse, blah, 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 but there's like a big twist about the apocalypse, so they like mm -hmm. reveal it. I can't remember book two or book three, I can't remember. I can't but, remember either, I think book two. I don't know. Yeah. But it's like a big mind-blowing twist. There's a couple big mind-blowing twists, actually. And just like, mm -hmm. I feel like it needs to be a movie, like some of the scenes of like, like, um, there's like an underground lab and stuff, and like creatures floating in tanks and stuff. I'm like, this, I can see this in a movie. Like, no, it's horrifying. Well, not you don't know that it's. Now you know it's a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, well, a, I mean, because you, you told me something about that, and it didn't really spoil anything. Okay. Like, you just okay. said, oh, there's a scene where they go into an underground thing. I was like, okay. Yes. <laughs> Everyone should be very intrigued. But yeah, there's a lot of good scenes in that that would be amazing as yeah. a movie scene. Especially some of the epic battles. Just, oh my god, so cinematic. I haven't read this book yet, but something awesome about it is that it is really inexpensive. It is like $5 for the paperback right now. So oh. if you want to read it for our book club this month, now is the time to get it. You definitely is that need on to. Amazon? Yeah, on American Amazon at least. Oh, okay. Oh, no. It's a real cute. It says yeah, there's a movie awesome. in development. Oh! Yeah, really? It's like a year, though, uh, so I don't know what's oh, going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, so maybe the rights have been sold, but I haven't seen anything going on about it. Was, it. it was more than the rights being sold. Like, they had a producer. They had a director attached to oh, it. What? what? I wonder yeah. who. Yeah, they mostly just seem to have producers that are coming from Spider-Man, Hunger Games, and a couple of movies I haven't heard of. Oh my god, yeah. excitement. So, oh, you uh, there doesn't seem to be news on it in a long time. So these things can die early. So yeah, we'll they need to not. It needs to not die. I'm Definitely mad. Needs to not it needs to not die. Happen. Because it everyone needs to, needs to read happen. it, and then the fans can make sure that it doesn't die. <laughs> right, guys? Guys. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. Just double check. It's the best. Um, on Amazon, it's four fifty four with Prime right now. Oh my God, it's so worth it! It's seriously the best series I've read in a while that like just, I couldn't put down. Oh, now I want to read it. It's so fast paced. <laughs> I don't want to go reread it now. <laughs> like, yeah, there's, there's, something, something there's just something magnetic about her writing. You know, like it would be a scene where like. Page is getting changed in the car, and there's like, Catherine. and it's, and sorry, I don't know. If I keep saying Page. That's her younger sister. Pen. Page is Pen. Pen. Pen is the, yeah. I'm just gonna call her Pen. Pen is the but sister. Pen is like in the angel book. Yeah. Just like Erica's book. Page. Page yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, no, Pen. Yeah, she's cool. Um, so she's getting changed in the car, and like, even though 
it's just like not even a, that crazy of a scene, but it's still so full of tension because there's like these weird people outside the car and like they're like trying to look in. I don't know. It's just like I can't even describe it. It's just so good. Like even through the little tiny scenes, I was just like, oh my god, I can't put it down. And All right, like I may have to start this this week. <laughs> I'm not yeah, even yeah, particularly really. when I'm talking about it. <laughs> I could literally, yeah, we could go on about that for hours. It's just yeah. fantastic. And she hasn't written anything else. And I'm like, Susan E., you need to write more. I stalk her on Twitter occasionally because I'm like, maybe she'll hint about something else she's writing. Maybe there's, so I'm just like occasionally stalking her on Twitter, but nothing so far. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm waiting for more. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily more of the Angel Fall series, but like anything. So. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. She has some unresolved issues that really need to be made into books. <laughs> like, even if you were at a grocery list at this point. All right, yeah, we're going to cut, cut off this conversation because we have to talk about just this book for a whole chat in like a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> Forgot about that. Um, yeah, in so the comments, not in the Angel Fall chat. <laughs> In the comments, Leah seconds that Angel Fall is an awesome book. And also, Desiree is in the comments because she hey. has fallen ill. And comments is a better place to be when you're ill. But she said that she just started reading The Raven Boys, which is not underrated. <laughs> <It's> underrated. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I feel like it is slightly underrated, and I'm not going to go on a big tangent for this, but a lot of people that come into the bookstore that ask about this, I'm like, have you heard of The Raven Boys? And a lot of them are like, oh, like, heard it in passing kind of thing, but, like, no one's actually really into it. I think I've only met a couple people when The Raven King came out when they were coming to go and grab it. I was like, oh, my gosh, I just finished it. Like, it's really great, and they were really into it. But almost no one knows it. They have I know it. there seems like it has a really devoted fan base. It does. But it's not that massive. But it's not, yeah. like, mainstream, like, Harry Potter or something. Like, there's there's a couple people in my uh, bookstore, like, that work with me that, that are really, really into it. Like, even the one girl today, she's, like, um, it was just a, a teenage girl asking me for some recommendations. She's, like, have you heard of the Raven Boy series? Like, is it any good? And I was, like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you have unleashed something on yourself. Like, stand back. Like, it's so good. And she didn't end up getting it. And I was, like, oh. It's like she was looking for more of like a psychological thriller in the YA section, which was really hard for me to try to recommend because I'm like, I don't read as much psychological thrillers in the YA. The <laughs> no, I recommended I recommended I am not a serial killer and um, Oh, I hunt killers would be a good one. I, yeah, actually, I, I recommended both of those. I'm like, I don't know if you're really into serial killers, but this is all the stuff I'm recommending. And then yeah. she's actually asking about something similar to The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. And I was like, oh, shatter me. And she's like, oh, no, I've already read those. I was like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like, that's, yeah, that's kind of like the fun everything. part. But then also, like, the worst part where people are like, oh, I'm looking for, like, something new to read. Like, I've read a lot. I'm like, have you read this? Like, yeah. Like, have you read that? Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I know. Like, yeah. I don't like, really I can't tell when people you. want recommendations. <laughs> yeah. oh, but it's sad when it's like well, we've read all now we're talking about underrated books that we can recommend, so you know the good one. Actually, I've recommended I recommended Shooter to her when she was asking about like kind of psychological messed up books. I said, like, "Oh, Shooter's really good. I just finished reading." She's like, "Oh yeah, I just finished reading it too." And I was like, "Crap, you read literally everything." <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that I want to talk about because, like I said, I don't know if it's like quite underrated because I feel like it's really I haven't like, heard of it, so I haven't heard of it. Yeah. It's quite new at the same time, though. Like, um, Penguin Random House sent it to me in, like, a kind of a, like a new releases bundle of books. So I think it's... But it's not getting, like, the amount of press that some new releases get. So I want to up the signal. What's the it's author just, like, again? Um, like, Caroline Pignett. P-I-G-N-A-T. Yeah, just uh, and searching on Amazon computer like, doesn't even come up on the first page. So I'd say that counts as yeah. It's a really cool cover. There's actually like a paintball splatter on the front in one of the O's because that has something to do with like the plot. Um, I won't give anything away, but basically the description in the inside cover is like kind of, it's like the Breakfast Club, but with like a crazy shooter on the loose. If they'd been like trapped in the library and like facing potential death while they were bonding. Yeah. Yeah. And then the best part is there's like, like, through learning about each other's backstory and being trapped in this space, they end up trapped in a bathroom. They learn that one of them has the connection to the shooter. And I won't say anything about that or what is involved, but yeah. It's so good. And they're like kind of unraveling like who the shooter is and like 
why what's his motivation so that they can like try to save the school and stuff. I don't know. It's so good. And really tense. So yeah. All right, all right. This is not a drill. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> that was a really good one. Yeah. Canadian author too. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. most of the uh, the um, I don't know if it's Penguin Random House Canada. Yeah, again. that's what I'm trying to look at. Cause like a couple of the Razor Bill thing are all like great Canadian literature. I'm like, so maybe it's just being promoted in Canada primarily at this point. Maybe that's why it's a little more underrated. Yeah. So far, but yeah. it's got to be big. I mean, it's such a like a, a crazy hook. Like Breakfast Club, but with murder. Like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Um, there's one other, I guess it's like a, I guess it's a contemporary, um, that's kind of similar vein. Um, I don't know how underrated it is, but I like recommending it to people, and no one ever knows it. Um, Lauren Oliver is the author, and she's the one that does the Delirium series, but the book is called Before I Fall, and it's a book about a girl who dies, and then she relives the day she died seven times until she finally fixes what went wrong. And so if she's, this, and I really liked it because she's this popular girl, so she's not that like shy, nerdy, typical YA girl. It's like, oh, I'm just like corner and I don't even think like she's like the queen bitch. And <laughs> she goes to this party, and then something at the party goes very wrong. And so every day that she wakes up, she tries to affect the outcome uh, at this party, and yeah, keeps having to relive the day. And she changes something every single day. And I really, really liked it. And for anybody that is living in Canada, um, the Bookstore Indigo or Chapters or what have you is having a two for twenty sale <laughs> on Team Books, and that's what yeah, they are. So you should go and buy it. <laughs> I totally bought like a whole bunch of stuff the other day. So I'm like two for twenty. Yeah. <laughs> actually, this is one of the ones I bought. Um, oh, I don't. Actually, have you guys heard of First Life? I've heard of it. I've heard, heard of it. Awesome. So pretty. I um, think I got a neck Gina, Gina Showalter. Yeah, I just I like I like. It's She's a big pretty. adult author. Yeah, it's just paranormal um, stuff, I think. Yeah, this is, but like oh, and the, Alice in Zombieland. Right. Oh, just, really? She does yeah. the Intertwined series, which is some vampire novels, I think. Oh, okay, so she's pretty big. But like yeah, this description is what pulled me in, and it's because, um, like, basically it's like, blah, 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 is your average 17-year-old girl. She spent the last 13 months locked inside an asylum. The reason, not her obsession with numbers, but her refusal to let her parents choose where she live after she dies. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, sign me up for this. Because apparently there's like two different afterlifes, and they're like warring with each other. And like your parents choose where you go after you die. But like both sides want her, so they're like basically both gunning for her. I don't know. It sounds really cool. Yeah. Your first life is merely a dress rehearsal. The real life begins after death. I don't know. I love stuff like that. It sounds really cool. So creepy. I don't um, know how underrated that is, though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's what like all of us are saying. In the comments, Janessa <laughs> said the same thing um, with uh, their favorite trilogy of all time, which is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Trill Trilogy. T R Y L L E. Amanda Hawkins. That's yeah, not Amanda Hawkins. <laughs> That's like New York Times bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, okay. I I'm just like an Amanda Hawkins. Like well, I'm Amanda Hawkins. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of Amanda well, Hawkins. Yeah, she got famous off of her other series, which is no. maybe why this is like underrated for. Yeah, off my blood approves. That's what. Oh, because this was her first like. This is where I've heard of her. That's when she. This like, was her. Yeah, but this was her first, um, like, traditional published one, I think, and her first... Which one? Was her first, the Trill series. She, the, she self-published it first, but then they republished it. So. Yeah, I, mean, I just mean, like, I think her first, like, really famous self-published one was the My Blood Approves series, the vampire one, as far as I know. But, yeah, no, that's pretty popular with it. She's just like one of those people that has a huge loyal fan base, right? So like general all overall probably it's underrated. Like most people won't have heard of it except for like her fan base maybe. It's hard like how underrated are we talking, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well underrated is really just you think more people should be talking about it. So even if yeah. it's already super popular and you think it should be more popular, it counts. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, speaking of that, um, one of my like big, big favorites for like middle, really voicey middle grade is actually Ellen Potter. You guys ever heard of her before? Nope. Mm -mm. No. That looks yeah. like a very Aaron book, though. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's called The Knee Bone Boy by Ellen Potter. And she's like, ah, she just has such a, like, this. I've seen that what? cover. I wanted to read it. I'm like, I've seen it. Oh, Isn't it cute? So cool. Oh, my God. I love it so much. It's just so, so British. And, like, it's just such a cute, like, just so full of character in the know, voice. It's just so it's cute true. and quirky. Ah, oh, it's so good. I keep looking for other books that she has written. But, like, in a lot of bookstores, it's only this one for some reason. Like, she's written a bunch of other books, so I don't know why. <laughs> but, yeah, that's definitely underrated. And it's definitely a really cute read. And very funny. It makes me laugh through the whole thing. Oh, I love it. Uh, All right, Megan, how about you? So... I don't have as many series, I was realizing. I have, like, lots of standalones and stuff that I really like. But this one is, like, a companion novel series, and we did one of them for Book Club, and it kind of got mixed reviews. But I love it. It was um, Cruel Beauty. I borrowed the, the second one from Emma, Crimson Bound, and so I'm going to read it next. And I loved Cruel Beauty. I really, really enjoyed it, so... Yeah, Cruel Beauty was great. Crimson Bound, yeah. I, have, I have read Crimson Bound. It was good. It was just weird. I think it, yeah. it was... You know how so cool was Cruel like, Beauty. <laughs> no, like Crimson Bound. Like, <laughs> it was weird. Like, <laughs> Crimson Bound was like, let's times the weird by a couple extra weird. Oh. <laughs> like, it was strange. All right. It was good, though. It was just odd. Yeah. Is it like... Was it like weird, like you're not sure what happened? Because that's what I found with the Cruel Beauty. Was like I think I know what happened in the end, but I don't. It's about the same. Yeah, it's uh, about the same. Like that kind of not quite the same thing, but like same level of like I think. Uh, I know what but then also it's really. I, know, I never know if I like. I don't know if I liked that. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she always has really interesting worlds. Yeah, um, I, I assume what? because. Um, she got her, like, master's, I think. But she studied medieval, um, like, medieval English, I think it is, at Oxford. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so, like, oh, that's geez. Cool. Yeah. That's intense. She knows things. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder if people that write these really weird books are getting, like, psychology degrees or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's Seems why um, the Naturals author, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, like, studied psychology, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense, too. Yeah. <laughs> Serial killers and all that. It's funny because I saw the second book in the Natural series on the chapters book, um, on their bookshelves, and I was, like, really close to buying it. I was really torn because I'm like, I had so many problems with the first one. I had so many problems with the voice and the story and the characters. And yet, <laughs> I still want to buy the second one. I'm like, yeah. I kind of want to know what else happens with the characters. So I probably mm -hmm. still buy it. Probably. I just want to know more about the how they identify someone, how they get into their head. I love those mm -hmm. scenes. She's Criminal Minds. I love that show so much, and it's kind of the YA version of that. So I'm like, I, I can't. I think I'm gonna buy it anyway. <laughs> How about you, Kelly? Um, good question. Giant pile of books to say. Let's see what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Someone came right. prepared. Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't know. Book recommendations is just fun. We don't talk about books as much as we do writing. So I'm going with Dark Inside by Jane Roberts, which is a creepier book than you would expect from me. But it is like... Mm -hmm. End of the world, basically, like a bunch of natural disaster thing type things happen, but also mm -hmm. most of the population just becomes evil murderers, and it follows four different characters wow. as they're all trying to like. It's also very um, Vancouver based, like that's kind of Ooh. where everyone's oh. headed. So that's cool. Yes. Very very creepy read. Okay. Two books out in the series, and then she ended up self publishing the final one. A couple months ago, which I haven't read it yet, but very, very creepy. Lots of murder, lots of Canada. Pretty good. Boom. Two of the best things. Everywhere I mean, so oh, we're well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in books. And <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Sorry, My favorite murder. Oh. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna think I'm a psycho or something. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get eh, back to the comments. I'm you, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to bring another one up that I, I knew it got some, a little bit of hype, and then it kind of just died away, and no one ever told, heard about it again, and that's um, the accident season. I just oh, read that. No. Yeah, I want to read, read that one so bad. I so do I, actually. Remember who the author is. Um, uh, okay, I was Moira Foley Doyle. I just oh, had to Foley. say it in a video. Oh, right, right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, it was a, it was a cool book. It was a really neat idea, and I just love. Oh, it's just like it's like oh, it's like a little creepy, but I just love that whole idea of like, what do you mean an accident season? Like the whole season, you're just very accident prone, and stuff keeps going wrong, and it's kind of like they're under this curse type thing, and then they're trying to figure out how to stop the accident season from happening, and the characters themselves are interesting. They're not extremely, like, there's not a huge character development to them, but they're still really interesting characters, if that makes any sense. And part of it takes place around Halloween, so there's that whole extra level of creepy around it, but I quite I, liked it. My favorite thing about that book actually wasn't the accident season part, which I thought was really cool, but like on the first page, the main character is looking through all her photographs and notices that this random girl from school is in every single one of her photographs, which I just thought was so uh, weird and that creepy. That is weird. See, I love stuff like that. Also, so that book weird. is set pretty much where I lived in Ireland, so I thought that was cool too. Ooh, cool. Oh, cool. I always see that one, and I, because I, for some reason, I obviously have a thing for covers where it looks like a girl is like falling, because it was the same with Exit Pursued by a Bear, <laughs> and then Accident Season. There's another one too that I was like, I was literally drawn to, and it was like a girl like flowing through the air, or whatever. I'm like clearly I have a thing for falling girls on covers. <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with me. But like, I always see the Accident Season on the shelf too. Like, there's mm. so many. I should just make the list of the ones I always pass by and go, ooh, pretty, and like think <laughs> about buying. Cause there's so many of them. And I always there's another one. I like, read more magic realism. And I always see that one on magic realism lists, <laughs> so I'm going to get educated, like maybe know what it is. <laughs> there's, also a, there's also another one that I, it's actually on our discount table now, so I'm like, hmm, it's like $5. I really should, but anyways, it's like um, Strucker's. Strikers. I can't remember. It was about a girl who's obsessed with lightning, and like, because the first time she ever gets struck by lightning is like an accident, but she like gets addicted to the feeling of being struck by lightning and like actively pursues it after that. Yeah, I don't know. It's really. Weird. I have to look it up now. That's just such a weird so, idea. That sounds very dangerous to someone's health. <laughs> well, yeah. I think she's entirely <laughs> stable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Why a book? Oh, struck. Yeah. Here. Hmm. It's just such a weird concept because I already kind of have a fascination about like lightning storms and like my husband got struck by lightning at one point. Like not what? direct, con not not a direct, not a direct strike because he'd be in the hospital. But it was like a. Um, he should have gotten to the hospital. I was, I was like yelling at him for that. But he got. I mean, it was like sheet lightning in the air and it like zapped his umbrella that he was holding, and of course it went down the metal pole and into the handle and zapped his arm, and, if, and he was like, just walking on the sidewalk, and he like dropped his umbrella because his arm went dead, basically. Yeah, and then he's like, yo, weird thing happened, like, my, my arm still really hurts, it's like still spasming. I'm like, what's the matter with you? Go to the doctor. <laughs> like, he never did, and he was fine, but I'm like, you could have had, like, permanent nerve damage, and he's just like, it's fine, I got struck by lightning, it's cool. Like, what is this a macho thing? Like, <laughs> but anyways, I've always been, like, kind of fascinated with um, people that have been struck by lightning, and there's people that have been struck more than once. And there's, like, stories about them, like, they've been struck multiple times by lightning and survived. So, I don't know, this kind of, uh, yeah, struck by Jennifer Bosworth. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So have you ever seen pictures of the bruises people get when struck by lightning? Yeah, they're, like, weird, like, they're so show. cool. They're, like, I mean, yeah. like, it's terrible. It's terrible. Well, they're, 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 <laughs> They're, sc the, they're scars a lot of the time. They have permanent oh, yeah, right. scarring like in the scar. shape of... Uh, yeah. like, they're almost like trees. Like, it's just the coolest thing ever. 
Like yeah. Really well, you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> permanent nerve damage wouldn't be so hot, but at least you have a cool scar. Fix <laughs> <laughs> <Six> dig <day> scars. <laughs> Not with you. Pictures of lightning scars. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people, there's a lot of reviews like um, on Goodreads. Like Wendy Darling gave it three. Like she's one of the most popular Goodreads reviewers. Book Smugglers rated it two. Like it's really mixed reviews, but I still want to see it. I mean, I still want to read it. <laughs> I just love the concept. Yes. Kelly or Megan, because I think Aaron and I will just go on and on. <laughs> yeah. Excuse <laughs> yeah. um, so, so do we have anything in the comments? Have anyone else thrown anything? We do. Um, we've got some more from Janessa and also Mia, um, which I agree with lots of these, actually. Uh, Leah recommended several. The Hollow Kingdom by Claire B. Dunkel. Summer's Tension, Poison Study, which is really good yes, so by Maria good. Snyder. I want to read that so bad. Um, the Year of Secret Assignments by Jacqueline Moriarty. Pitura um, and Lord Death by Martine Leavitt. And My Most Excellent Year by Steve Kluger. I put all of these into good reads. <laughs> And then from Janessa Kendall, uh, three more of my favorite underrated book series, underrated meaning I think more people should talk about them because I don't hear about them a whole lot, are The Darkest Powers by Kelly Armstrong, which I love that yeah. series. <laughs> um, Darkness Rising by Kelly Armstrong, which is the spinoff of Darkest Powers, which I have not read and now I want to. Yeah. Um, and the Kishara series by Amelia Atwater Rhodes which has some of the best world building and characterization that I have ever seen. So many books. I know, right? Yeah. Never enough time. <laughs> oh, that is the problem. I love the, the Darkest Power series. Yep. Because, uh, love that a lot. Um, but the spinoff series I did not really like, and I didn't finish it. I just read the first two. Uh, it was kind of got kind of convoluted. But I love Kelly Armstrong as an author, and she's, I love all her other books. Mm -hmm. I remember I first picked up The Darkest Powers. It came out while I was in high school, I believe. And I remember, like, reading it at the lunch table and, like, imagining, because at the beginning, she, like, accidentally raises these dead people or something like that. Oops. And she's at school oh. when she's seeing the dead Oops. people. I don't remember all the details, but she's at school. And so I was like picturing like she's in my school hallway <laughs> seeing mm. dead people. I loved it. That might break up the school day a little bit, you know, make things more interesting. Just a little, yeah. Walking dead. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have welcomed the distraction when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The most exciting thing that's ever happened to me at work is like a hazmat truck driving by, followed by a ambulance. driving by. I was like, well, a flag has broken out. <laughs> hazmat people are here. Cool. Mm, speaking of, I guess, plagues and the undead, uh, there's another one that I want to talk about that has to do with vampires. Just like, you know, around the same lines. Um, and that's you know, yeah. The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Wall. Oh, I know. I know. About. I just, it's one of my favorite vampire novels of all time, and I feel like no one knows about it. They know about um, Tith or Tithe or however the hell you say the other series. And they know about the thing that she did with Santa Clara, but she, they, no one knows about The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. I just love it so much because it's like a I feel like dystopian it's, vampire novel, and I really yeah, loved it. It's really good. I feel like it's one of those books that's like, when it came out, it had a huge amount of like push behind it, and then it like faded away a bit, probably because it was a standalone, I guess. Like, yeah. if you get something like... If you get something like the Raven Boys, it's like the first couple books come out, like hype builds and builds and builds until the last one comes out, and like it's pretty big by then, right? If you got one book, it's got a lot of push and a lot of like marketing at the start, and then that trickles away because another one doesn't come out to renew the hype, right? Yeah. So, because well, I know there's a lot of stuff on Twitter and, and that about Cold Girl and Cold Town when it first well, came out. Well, because there was such a not quite an open ending, but they, there was. 
There's it was. She could have done to make it a series, and I'm like, I want to oh, yeah. more. It was such a good book. Oh, it definitely could be a series. <laughs> oh, definitely. I would have. I would read so. I would read like an eight book series of that series. It's just. Oh, it was really <laughs> I DNF'd it. <laughs> no. Oh, I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought it dragged since I couldn't get like the pacing wasn't doing it for me. Oh, really? <laughs> well, for any of you listening that don't know what it is, it's just like a. Vampirism has taken over the world, and now people that have been bitten or that are vampires are put in these places called coal towns, which are like these isolated cities. Uh, and the main character goes to this party and wakes up, and everyone's dead because vampires attacked. So she goes with her boyfriend, who's been bitten, and a vampire that she finds in the upstairs, uh, and they go to the coal town to turn him in. And then, it's like, you know, stuff happens, and vampirism comes into play, and... There's like a little bit of romance stuff, and then we get to the cold town, and the cold town is really damn awesome. It's very good. It's a good book. Well, Kelly didn't like it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna have to read it yourself, and then tell us what you think of it. Yeah. Uh, all right, I have another, another one. Another underrated one, yeah. <laughs> From um, Megan so or Kelly. This is the Glass Sentence by oh, S. E. Oh, you made a video about this yeah. one. I watched it. I have to undress it because it's so pretty. It has this like oh, tissue paper me. wrapping, so you like see through it. Oh, so, nice. so it's worth owning just to have it on your bookshelf. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't like. I've read it and I really liked it, but the plot is. I don't remember quite as much as the world building because basically what happened is the world got sh like shattered essentially, and then different land masses exist in different time periods now. So Ooh, you cross what? over into like. So everywhere exists in like a different era, but you can travel Whoa. between them. So I know near the beginning of the book, it, like someone in the government of the main one, like where that main character lives, is saying no more traveling between them. So the main character's family is like map makers, and they like chronicle what's going on and where you can get like what different times exist and where. So they kind of go wow. off on an adventure, and it, it's pretty awesome. That sounds That's really crazy. Cool. The yeah, world building. Like, I have that. to read it. There's a someone at my store that like middle grade is like her thing, and she's always telling me to go and read that one. And I want to eventually. Mm -hmm. cause it sounds really damn cool. That's a middle grade one, eh? Yeah. Hmm. That sounds really good. Yeah. So far, I recommended a scary one and a middle grade one, which are usually not things I read. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's always like extra standout when yes. it's something you don't normally read and you enjoy it. Um, I have another book, mm -hmm. Under a Painted Sky by Stacy Lee. It is a western in which um, a slave and a Chinese girl, um, well, first the Chinese girl accidentally kills a man, and she and a slave girl uh, go on the run because of it and they're headed out towards California, and there's awesome girl friendship, and cute cowboys, and just really cool, like, all of her, like, Chinese culture is really woven into the story, like, uh, the one girl's the rattlesnake, and I, ah, I'm not doing it justice, but I really loved it. All right, sounds it good. It is beautiful. I just picked that one up from the library because I know you and Emma both loved it. So Yeah, and she has a new book out, too, that my brother got me for Christmas. It's called Outrun the Moon, and that one Ooh. is also a historical with a beautiful, beautiful cover. But it's over on my shelf, so I'm not going to go get it. Is <laughs> um, I'm going to mention something else that is like, I mean, they're both big name authors, but I feel like uh, Rachel and I went just to get oh, the signed copies. Um, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you have it too. Oh, you have the hard copy. I just have the hey. soft cover. Yeah, <laughs> we had to buy the soft cover and the new hard cover when it came out. Um, and we met Holly Black and Cassandra Clare at the same time, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but I felt like see that good sign. So pretty. Both of them signed it. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Like, obviously, it's not underrated. Like, both of them are New York Times bestsellers, but it's one of their lesser-known series collectively. I think. Um, 
but it's definitely like definitely a Harry Potter slash Percy Jackson, not rip off, but like very inspired by it. Like no doubt, but I still enjoyed it. When I read it, that was yeah. what I can't remember if I told you that or if I told someone else that, but I was like, this is literally a cross between Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. Yeah, but yeah. isn't it? I haven't read it yet, but isn't it the the main character though? Know, he doesn't like want to be the wizardy person. Oh. Yeah, no, he does. He tries to. No, he tries to fail wizarding school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty well, funny. I, the, the good thing I'll say about that is that I've read a lot of books that have that, like, elemental magic thing, but, like, oh, it's channel fire and channel water and blah, 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 and I always thought they were kind of boring, but this is the only book that I've ever read that I that they did a good job with that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. a good job with, like, elemental magic. So, mm-hmm. from, you know, for that, for that reason. Yeah. I'm also I'm shipping... I'm also shipping two of the characters. I don't oh, know. I don't know exactly who you're shipping it. I, ship <laughs> I don't know, but I also know that Cassandra Clare has written the type of fan fiction that I'm thinking of. So I'm like, maybe it will actually happen where these two characters oh do God, get I together. I love to see that. I know. It. I don't know. I love it so I'm hoping. Bad. Cross my fingers. <laughs> it's, it's like the it's like the Draco and Hermione fan fictions where you're like, it shouldn't be. But it should. <laughs> no, Draco Ginny. Draco Ginny. It's so funny because like rereading the Harry Potter series is like Draco is just a jerk. Like I don't want the <laughs> real Draco with anyone. Like, but like my imaginary Draco, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the bad guy with a heart of gold version of Draco, cool. Yeah. Not the real Draco. Exactly. <laughs> Like, I agree with J.K. Rowling on that one. Like, no, he's a little asshat. He doesn't need to be with, <laughs> with anyone else. It's not a big guy. He's basically... He's basically just, like, a like a bad guy, and the only reason he doesn't do certain things is because he's a coward. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> it's true. You know it's true if you reread, if you read the series, I the Harry Potter series. I will. You've read them already, right? You're just rereading them? I assume... Yeah, yes. Stephanie. Have you not actually read the Harry Potter series? Come on, guys, I watched your video. Catch up. <laughs> I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> no, I have never read Harry Potter. I know. I don't know how to read it. Bad book nerd. I should, I should take away my book reading license right now. You take <laughs> away your book nerd card. <laughs> but I There's will actually a surprising because... amount of There's a surprising amount of people in my bookstore that work for the bookstore that haven't read it. <laughs> hmm. Like a few of us have that admitted that, and I'm like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, if you watched my video from yesterday, you know that I'm planning on uh, reading them all in July. So there you go. The full experience. No. <laughs> After I finish the book, I'm currently reading. <laughs> I will <laughs> have all of them. <laughs> uh, I have been through all. Of them. I have all one right. more to recommend. So someone else okay. to recommend okay. stuff now. Ooh. Um. I have one. Go. <laughs> this one that I, I had some issues with while I was reading it, but it has that like thing, you know, where you're like, this isn't jiving in a lot of ways, but I can't put it down. Oh, um, it was <laughs> Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Allender. Oh, okay. um, first of all, oh, this cover is so creepy. Yeah. It. It's a trilogy. Wow. And the other covers are just as creepy. I'm actually gonna get this one. Well, I've read her other one. That's the Dead Girls of Hysteria Hall, and I love oh. that one. But yeah, it was like it was just okay. But the other ones sounded those really are cool. creepy. Like, like, almost too scary for me. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't terribly, terribly scary. Um, but it had a lot of like the horror tropes that you like. You say are tropes, but you love. You know, like the creepy dolls, and the sister turns around, and her eyes are a different color. And, uh, uh, wow. it was so fun. I, I like it. like that. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't look at the covers for too long, though, because they creep me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want those books. I like creepy books. <laughs> well, like, I like yeah. creepy, like, I like creepy, like, Angel Fall creepy, but the other ones are a little too creepy for me. I think they're a little too real. That might be what they are. <laughs> Which, those ones that Megan suggested? Or different ones? Uh, the ones that Maggie was just holding up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else did you say you've read her other book? Some Dead uh, Girls of Something? The Dead Girls of Hysteria Hall. 
I've heard of that before. It's like a, it's a ghost. It's a ghost one. Um, and I liked it. I thought it was cool. Mostly because I'm really into ghosts and paranormal stuff, so I really like that aspect of it. But it was a little, it was like on the edge of creepy. And these ones that <laughs> Megan said, I'm like, I don't want, I want to read Bad Girls Don't Die, but it's like, it's like, it's so creepy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, and I like Katie too. She used to be a book, like a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if all her videos are still up, but I know some of them are. And she has like book trailers for her books and stuff on them. Oh, cool. That's cool. Which I love me a good book trailer. Loves is a good book trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So far, rare and few and far between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hers have like actors in them, which wow. I always find really, really cool when they're actors. When they're actually good actors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have some recommendations in the comments as well. Mm -hmm. um, Desiree recommended How to Say Goodbye in Robots by Natalie Standiford, which I've been meaning to read for so long. Um, Desiree also recommended Once Dead, Twice Shy, a creepy, mm. awesome, underrated book by Kim Harrison. Um, oh, Kim Harrison, I think I, yeah, I think I know her. She does the, yeah, she does the paranormal books. Right. I think The, the Undead Pool is another one of hers. Oh. Yeah. What? That sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Hey, no Kim Harrison, I know the author. Um, we also have, um, Janessa said, it's okay, Rachel, I've been on Goblet of Fire since I was 11. I'm 18 now. I can tell that Goblet of Fire is going to be my least favorite. <laughs> oh, really? That's like one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I like Goblet. It bridges the dark and the, like, magical. Like, you still get the whimsy yeah. of the earlier Harry Potter books, but there's death, so... <laughs> I didn't realize how fast it goes from whimsy to death, actually. Like, I'm just now reading... <laughs> What's well, true? I'm just now reading the last book, and I'm like, that got dark so much faster than I remembered. Hmm. Like, he only has a few good years at Hogwarts, and then it's like, and now all your friends are dying. <laughs> Welcome to puberty. Yeah. All your yeah. friends are dying. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to read this now. <laughs> Happy, um, birthday. Yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, all your friends are dead. <laughs> we also have a pretty good book title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there is that children, yes. well, children's book. It's all like my a, friends are dead. The dinosaur one. one. Oh, yeah, I have that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a cartoon yeah. book. It's really funny. Yeah, I keep it on top of my Twilight book. <laughs> good choice. Um... Jennifer Daniels recommended The List by, I don't know, I've, I've seen this name so many times, and I don't know how to pronounce it, Siobhan Vivian. Okay, no, that no. sounds right. <laughs> okay. Um, it's about, uh, she said, affects a, a yearly list of prettiest and ugliest girls in each grade at a high school. Um, Libba oh, Bray wrote wow. a recommendation on the back cover. Mm. And then also 15 Love by Nicole Lee Shepard. It's about twin tennis players, one who still plays and one who quit. They can't stand each other and are very opposite when it comes to work and study habits. They end up playing doubles on their school team um, and have to learn to get along, uh, which also sounds very interesting. Oh, Siobhan. <laughs> Siobhan Vivian. That's a cool Siobhan name. Vivian. Right? Siobhan Vivian. I'm like a movie star. <laughs> That's what I'm writing. It does sound like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one that I have to recommend, because everyone needs to read this because it's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It's called The Falconer by Elizabeth May. And I know I've mentioned it before, either in videos or somewhere else. Uh, but it's an 18th century Scottish steampunk fairy novel, and I just finished reading the sequel, and hot damn, a lot of stuff went down in it. <laughs> and it was just so utterly fantastic, and 
it's very similar to Throne of Glass, if you like that kind of thing, with like the kick butt female you know, assassin type with fairies and magic and all that jazz. Uh, but the main character is a girl whose mother was killed by fairies the year before. So she teams up with this other fairy to learn how to fight them. Uh, but it ends up, there's this thing that's going down with this ancient curse, and the fairies have been kept at bay, and now the wards like, in this ancient prison are weakening, and they're all going to escape, and she has to help like, redo the magic, but then at the end it has the most ridiculous cliffhanger I have ever read. And it's so like, how dare you do that, and you just can't leave it like that. It's like literally the middle of the climax, and it's like, oh, surprise it ends. And you're like, what? <laughs> you go, Seriously? You have like a panic attack? I'm like, I need to read the second one. And the second one was just as good. So everyone needs to go and check it out. <sighs> yes, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the main character looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> but it has some of the best written fairies that I've ever read. And you know, like everyone knows me, I like my dark creepy fairies, I like my reworked fairy tales. And these, they're just, oh, they're so, they're so wrong, they're right. Like, their morals are just so skewered, and the way they look at the world is so different than ours. Like, they're so inhuman, that's what I really, really love about it. I have, like, such a hefty list now of things I need to read. <laughs> I know. I just, I just filmed my Word Nerds video for Tuesday, too, and I talked about how, like, I'm going to only buy the books that I've already read that I've been meaning to buy now. <laughs> Did I lie? Maybe. <laughs> now that I have this list. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, let me check the comments again. Yeah, we're at the, about the hour mark. So. Um, I think we need to put review. Pardon? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I had one more. I have one more. Yeah. Review each. Aaron, Rachel, Megan, go. Mm, you're cutting out a bunch. <laughs> I thought it was me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll stop talking. Go. <laughs> go, go, go. Sure you said. I'm Diane Wayne Jones. Anything by her, pretty much. Um, like this one's called Hexwood, and I haven't read it yet, but she does the, what other series did she do? Um, she kind of does the, like, original Harry Potter, because um, she did a really cute book series about a school for witches. Uh, now I have to look it up. I'm not and sure. she's uh, Howl's Moving Castle, right? Howl's, yeah, Howl's Moving Castle um, was her book series actually. And everyone knows the movie, but not as many people know that they are actually books. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that was her most famous one. Um, Charmed Life. Those are the, those are really cute ones as well. Like, she just did so, so many. Like, she was a major source of inspiration for, like, Neil Gaiman and J.K. Rowling, and yeah. So she's like old. She, I think she passed away a while ago. She's like a classic author. So yeah, no one reads as much as the classics anymore. So it's kind of underrated that way. More people need to know about it. Uh, we have. I didn't hear that. I think she asked if Rachel has any other recommendations. Yeah, I'm not skipping out, so someone else is going to have to wrap this when we get there. <laughs> okay. Rachel, any more recommendations? I have one more, so I'm going to keep it. One more. Um, there's this fantastic series that I found for every girl that no one knows about, and it's called Strange Angels by Lily St. Crow, and I know I've mentioned it so many times before just because it's so fantastic, and it has nothing to do with it. Angels at all, so I don't know why it's called that. But it's a five book series about this girl named Drew, who is a paranormal bounty hunter. And she and her father go around the states, you know, kicking, kicking butt and 
killing monsters and getting all this stuff. Um, but one day he does not come home from a mission, and she ends up having to go and find out what happened to him. And then she has this sidekick that accidentally gets turned into a werewolf. And they go on the run, and there's, like, vampires and werewolves, but there's other weird creatures. Um, so there's, like, chupacabras and these weird flying snakes that steal your dreams and death here and witches and, just, like, it's just it's such a cockroach spirit. It's just such a cool world. Uh, and the reason I love it so much is just because the Lee St. Crow does this, has this way of writing that makes it so real because you're like, okay, flying snakes with wings that steal your dreams. Yeah, okay, sure. But then the way that she writes, she talks about Drew waking up in the morning and, like, having a pimple. And she's like, oh, God, like, I hate this. Or, like, she has to talk about, like, having to pee in the morning. Or she's walking down the sidewalk and she has to, like, keep wiping her nose. And just, like, those small things that you don't even think about can, like, make her so much more human and make it so much more understandable. Just because it's those little things and, like, you don't think about. And, like, no one ever talks about that in books. But, you know, oh, man, there's this bruise and it's just so annoying on my leg. And... Like, she, she talks about that, so you kind of get into the same headspace, because you're like, I can imagine myself doing that, and oh yeah, I remember when I had that bruise on my hand, and that sucked, and like, that kind of thing, so you really, like, get into her head, and I really enjoyed that, and everyone should read it, because there's this really awesome showdown with the Vampire King at the end, that I can't spoil. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a couple more comments. Um... Mina said, I like your hair. I'm assuming she's talking about Rachel's fancy haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and then we had a recommendation from Andrea Henry, Nevermore by Kelly Krieg. Um, it's a trilogy, and they said that we should read it. All right. It sounds familiar, actually. Yeah. Um, but I think that is it. Did you have anything to add, Kelly? I'm not going to risk it because I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Word Nerds, and for sharing your favorite underrated reads. If you're watching this after, still post your favorite underrated reads in the comments because we love books, and there's always a need for book recommendations. <laughs> um, be sure to tune in next week. We are having a write-in. We will write all the words, and as always, we have videos every day of the week. You can subscribe. You can like this video. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye!